alongside of that, if we're afraid of making a mistake or getting it wrong, well, that means that we're literally building a wall between us and our dog. And we're teaching our dog, we're role modeling for our dog the very thing that we don't want our dogs to mirror, which is being tense and worried and afraid and and then, you know, having a meltdown when things don't go right. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? And so... Hi, I'm Kathy Kowalik, and I believe that our dogs connect us to the heart and soul of what really matters in life. So hang out, and we'll take a deep dive into the human-dog connection and explore strategies that will inspire you to create legendary, enlightened partnership with your dog. This is the Enlightened by Dogs podcast. Well, hello there, Kathy Kowalik here, your host of the Enlightened by Dog Show. You've been hearing me talk about this for years, about how living a partnership lifestyle is surrounded, contained by, influenced by having a heart-to-heart connection with our dog, right? I mean, it's like a core piece, and yet... Sometimes we really struggle with that. We don't even know we're struggling with it sometimes. Other times we do. But there's some things that are so common and honestly, pretty easily remedied once we know what's happening and once we have that insight about what else is possible. So we recently, we had a couple of like really, really deep and powerful coaching calls. And when I look back, you know, at the kind of the bigger picture of some of the, some of the pieces that came out of this really good discussion, what struck me is that so many of these pieces are really the very things that keep us from having a heart connection, which in turn keeps us from fully stepping into a partnership lifestyle with our dogs. So I thought I would talk about a few of these today and, you know, and, and I hope that it leads you to some of your own personal deeper insights and opens some doors for you as you're living a partnership lifestyle with your dog. All right, so I'm going to put this into the context of what stands in the way of us having a heart-to-heart connection with our dog. Well, and it to tell you the truth, it's the same thing that keeps us from having a heart to heart connection with ourself or maybe a, a mind to heart connection with ourself. All right. So one of the things is that we're not present in the moment and, and what that can look like for many of us is that we're stuck in our heads. And so we could just be thinking about things. We could be very well, thinking about what's actually happening, like with our dogs in the environment and our circumstance, what we're doing, what we're supposed to do, right? So it could seem like we're in the moment because we're thinking about something very relevant. But the reality of it is if we're thinking, we're not connected with our dog or our heart. We're stuck in our head, right? And and very similarly, one of the things similar to thinking, um, one of the other things that we commonly do is that we're worrying. And so worrying, thinking, it can, they can kind of be so like merged together. It can be hard to sort them out and hard to like split them separate them. You know what I mean? And, and so we, you know, gosh, we we worry about a lot of things and, 
And in this category of stuck in our heads and sucking our thinking, one of the things that we what, that we're thinking about is worrying about you know doing it right, you know making the right decisions, making the right choices. Are we interpreting things right? You know what I mean. And so we start worrying about that kind of thing, which leads me to the, like the next element or the next thing that stands in our way of having a heart connection, which is we can get afraid of making a mistake, you know, or we're, we're worried about getting it wrong. And I, I, I sort of think about this as we're, you know, it's like kind of like the curse of perfectionism, you know, and, and I mean, I get why we do it and I get that we're human and I get that we want to be, you know, like the best, most awesome, amazing and brilliant partner for our dogs and to get it right. I mean, like I get that, you know what I mean? So our, our motivation and our inspiration is on track. I mean, it's what we do. It's, I mean, we love our dogs and we, of course, you know, we, we, we want to get it right. You know, I mean, I get that. And yet alongside of that, if we're afraid of making a mistake or getting it wrong, well, that means that we're literally building a wall between us and our dog and we're teaching our dog. We're role modeling for our dog, the very thing that we don't want our dogs to mirror, which is being tense and worried and afraid and, and then, you know, having a meltdown when things don't go right. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? And so, yeah, let's, let's lighten up. You know, you've heard me talk about the trilogy of light, you know, be more lightheaded and lighthearted and light footed and, and not take ourselves so seriously, not take the, our dogs so seriously and the situation so seriously, you know what I mean? Um, and, and to, and to be willing to be an adventurer, an explorer, a discoverer of how to enjoy the journey with our dogs, you know what I mean? And that let me to think about this idea of being stuck in some old habits, because if we're stuck in our old habits, or if our dog is stuck in old habits, which, well, that kind of means we're, we're both together, like stuck in some old cycle of habits. That means that we can't have a heart connection because we're just operating rote. You know, we're just going through the motions. We're just being carried away by whatever circumstances we find ourselves in. You know what I mean? And so one of those habits that is so prevalent and so unhealthy and so counter to living a partnership lifestyle is the habit of being busy and connected, directly connected to that is our old beliefs of, that our dogs need to be kept busy. I mean, it, it's kind of crazy, right? And, and instead of allowing our dogs to help us like get off the hamster wheel of busyness, which would be really beneficial to everyone. You know, instead of that, we pull our dogs onto the hamster wheel with us. And oh my goodness. And so we're like obsessed with, you know, keeping our dogs busy, get keeping them entertained, you know, distracting them with stuff, you know, you know what I mean? And, and so we're, you know, we're, we're like stuck in this cycle of being busy and we don't even know that we're on the hamster wheel. We're so embedded in the hamster wheel that we can't even see it for what it is. And all of that 
leads to, I don't know, so much drama. You know, it's almost like another point leading right into the next point is that we're like addicted to drama. We don't even know that we're addicted to drama, right? And so we have these habitual patterns of behavior you know, us and our dogs and, you know, in in our, and it looks like in some cases, like it looks like our dogs are campaigning for something, you know, they want our attention. And so they're campaigning for action, some kind of action, you know, they, you know, so we think, oh, they need more exercise or, oh, they need more mental stimulation or, oh, they need to be distracted by something because so they don't react or so they don't, you know, they just stop bugging us. Right. And so that could look like barking or pawing at us or looking at us deeply, you know, eye to eye, you know what I mean? So they're campaigning for something, but in so many cases, it's just a habit. It's not that they actually need that, you know, more exercise, more enrichment, more play, more training, whatever. It's just a habit. And our habit is responding to that by giving them more of that. And so it just escalates and escalates and escalates. And it's, we're like unwitting partners on this crazy hamster wheel and we don't even see it for what it is. And, and then we get ad- addicted to the drama of it, right? And so we're, then we get, we get dramatic about it. And, oh, my, you know, my dog is, like, barking and bugging me and won't settle. You know, my dog is, like, you know, you know, needs more and more. And then I don't have time. I'm so stressed out. I'm so overwhelmed. You know, I'm so busy. I've got all these things to do. I've got, you know, my job and the laundry and the house and the babies and, oh, all the things, right? We've, I've got all the things. And, you know, and, and my dog is not cooperative. My dog isn't helping me. I don't know how much more I can do. You know, you like, you, you like, I'm doing all the things to help my dog be safe, calm and happy and empty the buckets, but it's not working. Right. I, I just, I can't do any more. Right. I'm doing all these things to keep my dog safe, calm and happy, but my dog just wants more and more or needs more and more or it's whatever, you know what I mean? And so then, then, wow. Okay. So, the, so just, um, you've probably been there. I know I've, I've been there, you know, occasionally in the past and past years. And I see it a lot, you know, in our, you know, certainly in, you know, in my work with clients and students over the years, and I see it now in our BP community and I see it in our, you know, dancing hearts communities and oh my goodness and we don't even know that, that 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 this is what we're doing we don't even see that one we're on the hamster wheel we don't see that we've sucked our dogs under the hamster wheel we don't see that we're being dramatic about everything you know we we just don't even see it because we're just getting it's like we're just swept we're just swept away down this river of stress and overwhelm and busyness you know what i mean And so what we can do about all this is to begin to recognize that that's part of what's happening, that it's literally a key root cause of some of the difficulties that we're having in our life with our dogs. And when we start to see that, we can start to change, we can start to you know, not get sucked in, we can first start to make a new decision, make a new choice, you know, to, to step off that hamster wheel and to bring our dogs off of that hamster wheel with us. Right. And to not get sucked back in with the busyness of it all and the, and to not respond to, and you know, the old habits of campaigning for more and more and more, you know, and and instead to breathe through that. And just to have that intention, I'm going to breathe through this. I'm, I'm, I'm committed to not getting sucked back into those old habits. 
and, and I'm going to lean into the discomfort a little bit and I'm just going to breathe through it. I'm going to smile. I'm going to open my heart. I'm going to quiet my mind and open my heart, connect with my dog and remember that what my dog most needs is a heart connection. My dog needs to feel connected. My dog needs to feel like they belong. My dog needs to be heard. My dog needs that bonding, right? And you know what? That's what I need too. As a matter of fact, that's one of the main reasons I have a dog in my life in the first place, you know, and we just, we, it's so, it's kind of funny. We just, we forget, we completely forget about the main thing. And so that's what I want you to do, my friends. I want you to breathe through that little bit of discomfort that you're going to feel when you decide to change things. You know what I mean? And and it works out. It, it's, it works out so, so beautifully. And we've had, we had a great illustration of that in the Brilliant Partners Academy with one of our gals, well, actually two of our gals had, uh, uh, an injury, uh, you know, like a, like a broken leg or, uh, a severely injured lower leg. And so they were laid up, right? So, you know, in a cast or in a soft cast in, you know, not mobile, et cetera, right? So can't move about, can't do all the things that they normally do. And they had to heal, right? And they had to stay off their feet for weeks and weeks. And it's kind of cool because what, what they discovered was that their dogs responded unlike what they were ex expecting. And I wanted to read to you one of the comments. And she said, so many takeaways and one of the things for me was not to add to my dog's over arousal and distracting with toys and treats and games doesn't work. And I found this to be true when I was forced to be off my feet for two months. I thought I had to keep her busy with something since I couldn't join in our usually on our usual activities outside for very long. I thought that she would be bored and start with unwanted behaviors or habits. But what do I know? Apparently nothing because her favorite activity while I was recuperating couch potato. I guess I was role modeling pretty well. Honestly, a wonderful learning bonding experience. And now that I know that I don't need to keep her busy to distract her for, from some trigger or distraction or drama and just patiently breathe through as I role model safe, calm and happy. And I'm so looking forward to continuing on with our safe, calm and happy lifestyle. So like, how cool is that? I mean, it, it was just a great example. And um, some of the other BPs have noticed the same thing with that when they took a step back, and just started breathing through and really decided to be more mindful and attentive and congruent to getting off the hamster wheel and, and fully embracing this one piece that's so often missing. And that is being with our dogs and not you know, getting sucked into that busyness and what, like pretty much across the board, what happened was heart connections blossomed. Dogs started blossoming and responding. Humans started loving the changes and how it affected so many other things. And so that is what I want for you, my friends, you know, to really open your heart to these heart to heart connections with your dog, 
the heart to mind connection with yourself and see about stepping away from some of these old habits that keep us from actually having these wonderful, amazing, and brilliant heart connections with our dogs. All right. Well, that's what I have for you today. So have a wonderfully brilliant week with your dogs. And just imagine what life will be like when you and your dog finally, truly, and deeply understand one another. Bye-bye for now. See you next week. Thanks so much for listening. And hey, if you would like to work with me so that I can help you discover the missing pieces you need so that you and your dog can finally be happy and enjoy life together, then head on over to DancingHeartsDogAcademy.com and request your invitation to join us in the Brilliant Partners Academy when the doors open for the next enrollment. See you next time and remember, a brilliant partnership with your dog makes your whole life brilliant.